G'day, John for the hot end again. This video is going to be part two of my ABS for dummies, which we had to split because it was too long and boring. Still could have a problem with it warping off the bed. Nothing is perfect in this world. It should work, sometimes it doesn't. If you've got fingerprints or something on your, your print surface or some dust, it's gonna cause problems. Another thing you can do, after you've printed your brim and your model has started printing, there is a last resort that you can use. And I've done this once and I know it works. Because you've got such a nice large brim around the base of your model, if you start to see that lift, you get yourself some Kapton tape and you tape the brim to the bed. Now, it works. It doesn't look real flash when you're printing, but it tapes that brim down solid to the bed so that your corners won't lift and it works really, really well. Okay, that's what I do on my, um, I call it zebra skin, to get the ABS to stick. If you're using one of the other things, I highly recommend using an ABS slurry on your glass or on your Kapton <laughs> to get the thing to stick properly. Now an ABS slurry is pretty simple. All it is is you get a, a glass container, doesn't have to be very big. That's what she said. Put some acetone in it, throw in some dead prints, uh, off cuts, whatever, of ABS into the acetone. That will melt into the solution and put enough in there that you get um, a consistency sort of like between milk and cream. Is that a hair gel? Yeah. It's, it's, you don't want it too thick, you don't want it too thin. Uh, it just gives you a nice slurry. You just apply a bit of that across your bed uh, and you should be able to get a nice adhesion using that. We have our print temperature, we have our bed, we have our adhesion problems all solved. So away we go and we're printing ABS. Wrong. There's one more thing that you have to get right if you want ABS to print nicely. Now a lot of people will call it enclosures. Enclosures to me encompasses a whole range of things. I will show you a couple of photos up here. It's of these two models. Now these are printed at exactly the same settings. It's exactly the same model, exactly the same. ABS spool. The first one that you'll see here was printed on my Folgatech FT5 with the original extruder and hot end and just with the printer sitting in my office. It's it's pretty damn good. It's a, a good print. Um, my office doesn't have any drafts. It's centrally heated uh, and in general, the atmosphere is, is nice and consistent. That should be fine. I don't need to enclose my printer. It's doing a great job. If you have a look in the photo, you will see around this poor girl's forehead, just below the eyebrows, there is a line. I actually saw that line happen. That line happened when I walked from my hallway into my office to check on the print. Now, obviously, my body movement towards the printer was enough to drag some cooler air with me to cause a bit of a draft. Oh, baby, too. Oh, now, see what you made me do? God damn it, I messed up my bag. And that's what it did to the print. So that convinced me that some form of enclosure is important. I reprinted it after putting a different extruder and hot end, which was a BPS V3, which we've talked about before. I found some half millimetre thick clear plastic. Now this was stuff that my wife had bought to, to use as a dining table cover to protect the table. I stole it. Yoink, 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 yoink. Cut out pieces and wrapped my FT5, four sides and top, in this uh, PVC plastic. It was not completely sealed and I didn't want it completely sealed because I'm scared of overheating of the electronics. So there's plenty of gaps around it, so it's nicely vented. But what it does do is it keeps the atmosphere in around the print stable and protects it from any drafts or severe temperature changes. 
So I reprinted it after I'd done that. And you'll see by the photos, it made a hell of a difference. As I said in another video, the macro photos do tend to show up warts and all. Looking at the model in real life, that is as close to perfect a model as I have ever printed. Those things are important. There are many ways that you can achieve a stable environment for your 3D printer while printing ABS. I've seen people use cardboard boxes, styrene, full um, IKEA table setups, all sorts of things. Stop that draft getting to your ABS. Anything will do, it's worth doing, gives you a nice print. A couple of things about ABS. ABS is not UV stable. So if you want something that's going to be outside and is going to have any type of strain on it, ABS won't cut it. I printed some parts for my caravan and it was actually a, a circle clip. It worked really well for about a week and then just snapped like chalk. So UV is a problem with ABS. You can paint it, of course, but you know I didn't want to go to that much trouble. So if you want something that's going to be UV stable, look at your pet G's and, and those type of things. Now, a couple of reasons why I like ABS and why I print with ABS personally. Now, these are my own opinion. Um, you might still hate ABS, but this is why I print with it. Firstly, foremost, I like the prints that come out. They're great. Secondly, if you're printing something that is in separate parts and has to be glued together, ABS is the go. I don't know about you, but the only thing that I have found that sticks PLA is two-part epoxy, and it is a prick to use. With ABS, there are a lot of different glues that you can use, or you can just use straight acetone to glue it together. Uh, and it's much, much easier to work with in that respect. Thirdly, if you're one of the people that likes really smooth, bright, shiny prints, you can use acetone in two different ways. The main one that's used is vapor smoothing, of which uh, Angus did a clip on, which is here. Or you can directly paint ABS onto the model, and not too thickly, of course, uh, and let it dry, and you'll get a nice, smooth, glossy, finish to your ABS print. I personally don't like that high gloss smooth look. I like to keep it a la naturale because that's how I like it. There are a couple of experts in the field of ABS which um, I can link you to up here. Chuck Hallebuck is a good source of information on ABS. And one other thing don't forget, goes without saying really after I've talked about drafts and, and temperature changes, no print fan. Turn that fan off, we don't need that. The less air movement inside, the better. One last thing that I'll mention about ABS and then I'll leave you alone. ABS, to some people, uh, can smell quite strong. Do you smell that? Smell what? Hey. What? When it's printing, and some people can have uh, a bit of a reaction to the fumes that come off it. My eyes, the goggles do nothing headaches, nausea, that sort of thing. I personally have never noticed the smell, nor has it affected me in, in any uh, way whatsoever. <laughs> but having said that, just be careful with it. You may need to vent your printer area if, uh, if it's a problem to you. That's why I use ABS. I like ABS. I also like PLA. Let's, uh, let's have a bash at ABS, see what you think of it, uh, and let me know in the comments. If you have a, if you have a go at it, uh, and you're having problems, let me know and I'll, I'll see if I can help you out. I'm also available uh, if, you, if you want any advice or you're having problems with it, you can get me at our Facebook group, which is 3D Printing Geeks, of which the link is here. That's enough of me, I've spoken too much, my voice is gone and you're all sick of looking at me. So that's all for now, we'll catch you on the next one. And your model has started primping. Primping? I quit. <laughs>